Okay, hi there. So I'm going to talk about the tick lifecycle method and just for some background information so that you understand why it is useful or what it's used for. So in Svelte, you have your state here. So all these variables are the state and when the state changes, then this will affect the HTML and it'll be changed on the screen. So Svelte can choose when to update the DOM or the screen after you've changed your variables. So for example, if I change this to two, Okay, then it gets updated like that. But it could wait, for example, maybe I want to change this one and this one, and maybe it knows that I'm going to change them both. So I might go, maybe I have one, one, and then I want to do two, two. So here it updated after each time I that I changed it, but it could have waited till I updated both and then changed the screen. Okay, and that's what Svelte does. So for example, here in my step function, scale one gets changed. So Svelte has a choice of whether or not it wants to update the DOM or not. Okay, so should I update the DOM right after scale one gets changed? So this the state has changed, so it should be reflected here. But Svelte is going to wait until other aspects of the um, state have been changed. So it's going to wait, they call them uh, micro tasks, I think. And so it's going to wait till anything else that might be affecting the DOM is done sort of computing, and then it'll update it. So here, rather than updating it um, right after this is done, it's going to wait till f this step function is fully executed before updating the DOM. Okay, I hope that makes sense. Um, it does that so that it's not just updating the DOM after every single little um, state change. Like for example, maybe I change like 20 different aspects of the state here. Rather than updating the DOM 20 times, it's going to wait till all of those variables have been updated and then update the DOM. Okay, I hope that made sense. So let me show you what I have here. Basically, step, um, every time I hit go, oh, let me change this back to one. Yeah, so every time I hit go, they get a random, randomly scaled. Okay, so uh, like that. And it says Peach Puff has one. So Peach Puff, it says, reach the end first. So you'll see there's an issue here. When I hit go, it says the race is about to begin, but it already started. And I do it again, it says Dark Orchid is winning. And I do it again, but Peach is obviously winning, but Dark it says Dark Orchid is winning. So the problem here is that the state is being changed, and then this is interacting with the DOM. So it's querying, oh, query selector, get this, get this, and see how far away is it from the top. So this is acting on the previous DOM, which hasn't been updated yet. Okay, so you would think, oh, I changed scale one, scale 2, it should change this, and then I can query it, but no, it has not been changed yet, so it's not going to work. Okay, and that's where tick comes in. So we're finally to tick. So import tick, uh, tick from Svelte. Okay, so what I can do here is force the DOM to update by doing await tick, and this function will have to be async then. Okay, so it's going to await tick. So basically, after each tick, um, it checks the state and then updates the DOM. So here it's going to await, this is a promise, and it's going to wait for it to resolve. And that means, okay, everything has been updated, the DOM is updated, now move on. Okay, so now if I do it, you'll say it immediately changes. Peach Puff is winning. And then here, now Dark Orchid is winning, and I keep going and Peach Puff has one. Okay, so this tick basically just forces the DOM to update. Um, or, I mean, really what it is is it's a promise and it's waiting for all of the micro tasks to be completed. Okay, so I hope that made sense. Um, it's a bit tricky to wrap your head around, but that is what it does. Okay.